in order to receive the word of God. And God, every ear is quickened by your word, is quickened by the Holy Spirit. It is, it is inclined to hear the word of God. It is inclined to hearken to the word of God. It's inclined to consume the word of God. For God, I declare that appetites are hungry and they are thirsty. And your word will not return to you null nor void. It will do what it set out to do. Now, Father, we thank you in advance for the deliverance, for the breakthrough, for the answers, for the wisdom. God, we just praise you and we thank you by faith that you will answer our prayers in this, in, in this time of fellowship around your word. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Oh, let's go ahead and shout about that. Amen. Hallelujah. Before you take your seats, go ahead and find you two or three people. Love on them. Let them know they're special to God and especially to us. Glory to God. need a Bible, slip your hands up, and uh, we're going we're gonna to hop in this Word, and we're going to move through this Word tonight, and we're going to allow the Word of God to feed us. Uh, we've been in a series um, basically founded and anchored in hope, and we define hope as the ability to foresee change in the future, and, and, and we know God is Jehovah Jireh. He looks around the corner, and He provides for us, and, um, <clears throat> you know, it's important to have hope. It's important to 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 expect a happy ending. It's, a, it's important to expect a happy outcome, uh, uh, not based on your strength, but based on God's word and what God told you is going to happen. And we're going to see in the word of God. You're going to get stirred up tonight. And, I, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, if you're not operating in hope and faith, you're just, you're just going to church. You, 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 you're just going to church. Um, let, let, me, let, me, let me just, I, I got to slow down. I got to slow this word. Uh, but let's go to let's go to Hebrews eleven. Hebrews eleven. <clears throat> Glory to God. Hebrews eleven. <clears throat> let's get the <this> scripture. <clears throat> let's get the scripture anchored in us before we take off here. Hebrews eleven, uh, verse one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report, verse 3, through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay, so let's unpack this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Who was that? I don't know what that was. A lottery or whatever it was. Excuse yourself and go ahead and answer the phone. Bring the tithe. Hope. Hope is like an actor. Faith is like a supporting cast. It's, 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 you, 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 you can have your hope. You, 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 you have a positive outlook. On the future, you have a you 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 you're, you have a positive outlook on the uh, outcome. You have your hope in place, but you're gonna sit there if you don't move by faith. Oh, I just got so much hope now. Me and my wife, we're gonna restore ourselves, so on and so forth. Oh, I can say I can see I can see the light tomorrow. I can I can see us five years from now. I tell you what, your hope is in place, 
But you had better get some faith going and get it going fast. Faith to do what? See what you haven't seen the last five years in your marriage, although you're hopeful today. Now I know what I'm talking about because I've been hopeful. But things brighten up for me. But how many people know you can become hopeful in the midst of chaos, hopeful in the midst of a storm, and the joy of the Lord is your strength? It's not your faith. It's your strength. You got to employ some faith to see what you haven't seen in the last five years in that marriage. What is that? You got you to gotta allow faith to be blindfolders in your relationship, and you got to prefer one another. You got to use soft answers now. You got to serve now. You got to pick up your cross daily now. You got to hold back on your talking now. You got to walk this thing out by faith. But just hope alone and no faith, you're going to find yourself in two, three weeks, two, three months, six months to a year, back in the same place. Why? You didn't allow, you, you didn't allow the supporting cast to undergird your hope. <clears throat> now, let's keep going through this. It says, it says, through faith now, 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 now Say hallelujah if you're a child of God. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Okay. We're on the same page. So through faith, we understand that the world in which we live in was framed how? Now, in your notes, ask your, ask, just write this down. What world do I want? What world do I want in my finances? What world do I want in my marriage? What world do I want in my, in, in, in my healing? What world do I want in my singleness? What world do I want in my parenting? What world do I want in my, in, in, in my business? Listen, the word of God can frame it. Yeah. Participating in church, participating in a small group, participating in a Bible study is not walking by faith. It's not walking by faith. And, 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 and uh, I got this, <clears throat> I like a good yard, okay? I like a green yard. I like a level yard. I like, I like, I just like, a, I just like a tapered yard. I want it to look good on Friday evening or whenever Minister Jeff come by. I want that thing looking good and, and. And so I had to, we had to put in a permit because we wanted to cut down a crepe myrtle. I said, I want this crepe myrtle out of my front yard. I'm sick of it. The lightning has struck it. It does not bloom anymore. It just grows green leaves. I don't see no pink, no white blooms, no nothing. It's got to go. So HOA says, okay, give us a $500 deposit. You cut it down. You get the root, the, the, the root, uh, 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 the stump uh, taken out of there. You, you get this taken out. You take a picture of the finished works, send it back to us, and we'll give you, we'll give you the deposit back. Now, why am I even telling this story? Because when, when, when my lawn guy laid the sod, the minute he took his hands off of it, the minute he took his hands off of it, here's how faith works. I, it, the, the only thing I know to do is water it and allow the sunlight to hit it, but there's nothing else that he can do or I can do. Why? What do we got to trust? We got to trust that the roots will grow down and they'll grow sideways and connect with the sod and then the green will come up. We cannot keep lifting up the sod saying are the roots going down. You got to stand back off of what you've worked on and you got to believe that God, the Holy Spirit, the angels and everybody else and his word is going ahead of you. But you can't keep lifting up the saw, checking the roots. Now, now, people who don't understand this will run a lawn guy crazy. <laughs> what are they saying? Hey, what do I look like saying, Jeff, control the ground? He goes, I can't control God's ground. <laughs> the ground is not a building. You can't tell me to bring more supplies. Hurry up and put this wall up. The ground is not a building. You can't control God's ground. You got to trust it. You have to trust what's in it already built in it. And, 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 and so, I, so now I have enough confidence. Surely I'm a long guy, but I have enough understanding 
of the ground to let it grow blindly. Hey, uh, 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 Minister Jeff, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's Tuesday, man. I want to know if you can swing by here and, and, and kind of look at this thing. I, I don't know if it's doing right. Well, well, is, is sunlight hitting it? Yep. Is, uh, are you watering it like you're supposed to? You can't be J.A. conscious when you're putting out new grass. <laughs> and we just did this. We, we, just, we just put it down. You can't be J.A. conscious. You got to do what the man says to do. I said, hey, I'm watering it. The sun is coming down, so on and so forth. Now, I can't control the pH balance in my soil. I can't control the clay contents in my soil. I can't control the sand contents in my soil. All we know is ground is tilled up, sod is laid down. Once it's laid down, roots have to grow down and roots have to grow sideways and that sod has to connect and we are not in control of it. The only thing we're control of, in, in control of is feeding it, watering it, feeding it, watering it. And then, and then, and then one day we'll walk out there and we'll grab that piece of sod and pull on it and go, whoa, what's going to happen? The roots, the roots have went down. The sod and the ground has cooperated. And the roots have went down. You walk over to another piece on the end there like we did yesterday in our yard and, and pulled it. I said, oh, put, put it back down. And you, you, be, be patient now. But I can't look at the ground. I can't look at the ground and go, now why are you not connected yet? Why aren't you green like the other places? Why, why aren't you doing that? Get Jeff on the phone. Get him on the phone. Get him over here. What are you even talking about? You sound silly, Derek. You're trying to tell Jeff to control the ground. And our faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Your spirit man is the ground that that word goes into. And the reason a lot of people don't walk by faith is they don't trust the ground. They want to strive in their own strength. They don't want to let patience have a perfect work when, when, when you say, you know what, it's time for us to have a baby. It's time for us to have one. You got to employ your faith. You're hopeful. You, you, you can foresee change in the future. You're hopeful, but you got to employ your faith now. You got you to put that sod down and you got to leave it alone. You got to put your faith out there. You got to keep your prayers out there. You got to keep your belief intact. You got to believe God's word. You got to confess your scriptures. Now, this is not works I'm talking about. You are already believing that the word of God is going to do what it says it's going to do, but you have to move by faith. And a lot of what we call moving by faith is striving in our own strength. That's why you're stressed out. That's why you worry about stuff. That's why you can't get no sleep. That's why you can't get no rest. That's why you look at your bank account 25 times a day. You are not, you are not walking by faith concerning your money. If, 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 so, 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 so the guy says, hey, it's 500 bucks. Deposit. Get it cut down. We'll come out and inspect the sod and see if it's compatible with our uh, uh, neighborhood uh, uh, the cosmetic look that we want to achieve in here. And uh, if it's not, you have to continue until it is. But here's the thing. If $500 rattles me, the project, I'm not going to be thinking about the project. Why? Because the doggone money to get the project done has rattled me, and that is not walking by faith. Walking by faith is, God, I got to get this done. I receive the extra income. It's got to get done now. It's got to get done. I'm going to go ahead and move. See, and that's not financially slothful. That's believing God. Now, if it was $50,000, just look now, uh, we want to put a swimming pool in the back, and uh, it's $50,000 to get that swimming pool in. I'm, I'm not going to move by faith and, and, and get a backhoe out there and start digging stuff. No, 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 no. My faith, our faith has a threshold. God says, hey, man, you can afford this car. How much is it? $1,700 a month. $1,700 a month? Man, we had budgeted for uh, $1,200. Uh, that's 500 over. I, I, I don't want to stress myself out believing God every 30 days <laughs> for $500. That's, 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 that's way outside of my faith threshold. But if he says uh, you budget for 1200 it's going to be 1435 dollars uh, per month. Oh, shoot, 235 We can believe God for that. So everybody's got their own little faith threshold. But your faith, 
you, you got to add that to your hope. That's why when we come, let's, 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 God Almighty. Let, let, me, let, let me get back up here. Let me get back up here. Let me get back up here. Uh, faith, complete trust in something. In this context, we're talking about the word of God. Complete trust in the word of God. Faith does not allow you to say, this is just the way I am. No. What way does God say you're supposed to be? This is just who I am. No, what way does God, who does God say you are? You got to pour your faith and start trending towards that. It's a complete belief in someone or something. Faith blindfolds us from doubt. If you employ it, it will blindfold you from doubt. And boy, if you open your eyes when you walk about faith, it will terrify the fire out of you. How in the world did I get? Good God. What, what? Man, I wish I'd have kept the blinders on. Man, I'm telling you, faith, faith blindfolds your doubt when you walk in it. Why? With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Not striving in your own strength. You're going to hurt yourself doing that. But with God, I'm here to tell you, what world do you want to frame tonight? What, do, what, what, what world do you want to create tonight? The spiritual currency is faith. And again, we're not talking about works. We're talking about God has already done it. You got to walk in belief, that belief, that already belief that God has already done it, and you move towards it. You got $10,000 worth of debt? Get out. I only got 200 bucks left a month extra. Walk by faith. What do you mean walk by faith? Pay 75, believe God for 700 more extra. Lord, at least I'm exercising myself. I'm exercising my senses unto godliness. At least I'm moving towards the thing. It's $5 a month. God, I'm believing you to pay off 500 bucks a month. Well, I tell you what, start with five. God, I'm believing you to pay off $5,000 a month. We'll, we'll start with 500. Walk by faith. Allow faith to blindfold you and say, you know what? I'm taking off. <clears throat> hope. Hope will have a lady on a job that she doesn't like. And she's got a business in her heart that she wants to do. Faith goes, you got one part. You need one more. What's that? You need me. It's in your heart. I can bring the building. It's in your heart, I can bring the van. It's in your heart, I can bring the people. It's in your heart, I can bring the resources. It's in your heart, I can bring the land. That's what faith says. So the hope says, you know, man, I'm really hopeful that I can do X, Y, and Z one day, or that we can step out and do X, Y, and Z, and then that's great. And faith goes, okay, uh, he's tapping you on the shoulder saying, okay, let me help you with that building. My God, I got two houses, I got this, I got that. But how are we going to get a building to start this thing? Faith goes, let me help you with that. Don't strive in your own strength. Let me help you with that. Well, man, I really want to pick up. I really want to start an after-school daycare transportation business to pick up kids and kind of drop them off, and I'm going to be a safe transportation business for kids after school. I want to do that. But, my God, I can barely pay my car note. That's been in your heart for how long? Hope says, this, this hopeful thing has been in your heart for how long? I, I, it's just for 10 years. Okay, it's been sitting there for 10 years because you never stepped out on faith with it. Now, when I say step out on faith with it, I'm not saying shoot straight to forward. What I'm saying is you got to employ your faith and start saying, Lord, I received my first van. And guess what? Your first van may not be brand new. It may not be leased. It may not be purchased. Somebody could give you one. I don't like the way this smells. It, it smells like I don't, I don't like nothing. Ho, 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 ho now. Faith has brought it to you. It's going to keep bringing it. It's going to keep. You're going to get a better used one. You're going to get a brand new one. Now you got two of them. Now you got three of them. Now you got three people driving them. And all of a sudden, so how did I even get here? I just hope for this thing. Well, faith says, I know you got hope in your heart. Let me go ahead and help you out with what you're trying to, what you're trying to achieve here. <clears throat> Do you know how many believers have things in their heart? They want to feed the homeless. They want to, they want to give electricity to the third world countries. They want to give water. They want to create wells, all this kind of stuff. And it, it, it's not like our God to say, I know you got all that. 
hope for stuff in your heart, but you only make $50,000 a year, so that cancels you out. No, 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 no. You want to equalize the playing field? You make $50,000 a year? He makes five hundred. dollars He makes five hundred dollars in stashes. He, is, he will leave no trace of anything, any monument, any memorial he did in the earth. But somebody with faith making $50,000 a year, God will bring them resources. They'll build wells in Haiti. They'll build, they'll build houses for domestic, domestically abused men, domestically abused women. And they only make fifty grand a year. But faith says, hey, man, I, I can bring it to you. I'll take a millionaire and pay for that thing for you. I'll take a billionaire and get that land for you. I'll take a billionaire and give you that building for you. Well, what are you talking about? But we walk around in our own strength thinking we're doing something. Faith is like, I spit on your effort. All you do is wake up, go to work, and go to church. That's it, and count your little money. That's all you do. Faith goes, man, come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's, 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 let's keep going. <clears throat> Faith is a belief and reliance on the word of God based solely on the authority and the integrity of its author. Faith is the belief and reliance on the word of God based solely on the authority and integrity of its author. That has matured to the point of affecting. <clears throat> affecting your outlook. Faith is a belief and reliance on the word of God based solely on the authority of the, and the integrity of its author, God, that has matured to the point of affecting your disposition. Your point of view. Point. <clears throat> See, when your faith has matured, it begins to affect your outlook your disposition, your point of view, <clears throat> your countenance. Your speech. See, we can't come to church and allow people to run around and shout and this, that, and the other, and, and the word of God and the faith, the, the, the faith and the word of God God Almighty, God built this world with words. People, people that sit under that word of God, under that word, their outlook has to be changing. Their disposition has to be changing. Their point of view about life and everything else, money, it has to be changing. Their countenance, how they carry themselves, their attitude, it has to be changing. And what's coming off of their lips has to be changing. <laughs> At some point, you got to go from one 800 credit score to want to buy commercial buildings with your credit. <laughs> I mean, my God, what's the purpose? Well, I, I got an 805. Asked God other day, I said, what's the highest credit, score you, credit, credit score you've seen? He said, 900. I said, man, they ain't know they made a 900. He said, he said, he said, he said let me tell you, from, from 700 to 900, it's no different as it pertains to us. So, 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 so once you reach your 700 or your 750 or 800, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? This word should be affecting us. It should be affecting us. Affecting our faith. Our behavior. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if the only confidence you got in your provision in this earth is how tight your resume is, you're shortchanging yourself. Lord, I receive everything you have for me. Both qualified and unqualified. I receive it. I receive it. My, my, my degree says this is all I'm going to make, but Lord, I receive, I receive both unqualified and, 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 and qualified. I receive everything you have for me. Now, my resume is out there, but I, I, I receive $85,000 a year. And I'm going to keep that on my speech. I'm going to carry myself like that. And if you don't do that, you will submit a resume in your range of income. Won't even negotiate it. 
God told us, he said, I moved down from New York. You know, they called me down. I've been doing this business for 35 years. He said, my salary, I negotiated my, uh, my brand new car. I said, man, you got a brand new car? They got you a brand new car? He said, yeah, I negotiated it. He's from New York. <laughs> you can come down here in the South and just take over. <laughs> they're, not, they're not afraid to talk. They're not afraid to claim their worth. They're not obscure. You ever go to New York and, and say, hey, and how you doing, and shaking your head? You go, they're going to be like, what are you, is this guy speaking to me? Man, I got somewhere to get, some money to make. What is this guy? You're too friendly up here. <laughs> but it should affect our speech, our behavior. I don't know about you, but I've started a business before, and right in the middle of that business realized, this is hard. <laughs> this is not bringing what I wanted to bring in. This is not happening. It's just not happening. I'm giving it all I got. We're giving it all that we got. We, we're marketing. We're flyers. We, 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 we're giving, and, and, and giving it all you got, except you ain't got no faith. See, if you're a solo, if you got one employee, treat that one employee like you got 10. Ain't no late check. Ain't no I'll pay you tomorrow. Ain't no none of that. It's on time. It's taxes out of it. It's, 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 it's hey, man, I got, you, I got you a meeting set up with a uh, financial advisor to make sure you're doing the right thing with your money. Da, 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 da. I want to make sure that my employees are growing in their personal lives as well. Well, my God, it's just, it's just your nephew. I mean, I mean, come on. Faith goes, no, no, no. Faith goes, no, 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 no. I got 10 of these coming. Do you hear what I'm saying? <clears throat> Man, I just want 10 vans for the daycare. And the one van you got for the daycare, don't get the tires rotated. Don't get it serviced. Don't get it clean once a week before for to have a good appearance, the windshield cracked, and all this kind of stuff. And you believe in God for 10 of them? <laughs> Faith says, believe me for more while you steward what you have. Yes. You steward your $40,000 income, but don't stop believing God for 80. You steward your $100,000 your business, but don't you stop believing God for $400,000. Don't, don't, don't you do that. College and degrees tranquilize our faith. They're like tranquilizers. Hey, you went to school for this. This is your range of this, 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 this. And people will do it for 20, 25 years. Same thing. What have you done outside of what they say you qualify for? Faith goes, you never talked to me. You never employed me. You allow them to tell you what you was worth, that's what you did for 20 years. You allowed that degree to tell you, you can only go as far as this right here now, and faith goes, I know you was hopeful, but man, tap me on the shoulder. I got 10 vans waiting on you. <laughs> I, 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 I got three houses waiting on you, man. I, I got four transition houses for, for, for you, young lady, for those ladies coming out of prison. I got four of them waiting on you. I'm in an apartment, though. Does not matter. If you walk in by faith, you equalize the playing field. You don't need money when you walk by faith. You will take favor. Yes. Amen. See, when decision makers get on your side, yes. decision makers get on your side and you walk in by faith, they can tell this lady really wants to help women coming out of prison. How much, is, what, what kind of building do you need? Philanthropist, what kind of building do you need for this? Well, I just, I got a two-bedroom apartment. I got my car. I got three kids here. And, and they're saying, what kind of building do you need? I need this kind of building, but I don't have any furniture. No problem, we'll furnish it. Well, I kind of want to get them out and just kind of help them get a job and help them with their resume. So, so you need tutors? You, 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 and, 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 and how in the world does he get all of this? Faith pulls it down. Yeah. Our Father, which art in heaven, thy kingdom come here. Thy will be done here. Your faith will bring it down. Your faith will bring into your life what your income can't bring into your life. Your faith will bring into your life what your credit can't bring into your life. Your faith will bring into your life what your brown nosing can't bring into your life. You can brown nose all day long. They still don't like it. Your job, you're still not going up. But faith goes, ah, I, I, I see myself being the VP of this thing. And I'm going to carry myself like that. Yeah, but you got a couple stomach blocks in front of you. Faith says, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You just keep believing God and frame your own world as it pertains to your career. Amen. Uh, 
I know I'm going to preach this same thing <laughs> on a Sunday. Romans 10. Because what we can forget the simple things and just allow worlds and jobs and careers and degrees to just tranquilize our faith, and we ain't walking by faith on nothing. Now I'm talking business, I'm talking vans, but you got to walk by faith if, if you want to lose 45 pounds. You got to walk by faith if you, you want to get off those two blood pressure uh, medications that you're on. You say, man, I don't, I, don't, I don't like vegetables. Walk by faith with it. Frame your own world. I tell you what, I tell you what, you can say you don't like vegetables at, at, at 40 and 45, 65, 70, you won't be able to say that now. So you better start now. And walk by faith concerning that thing. Yeah. Let me tell you this. Eat for nutrition. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to get something done health-wise, not taste. Yeah. Eat for nutrition. Oh, it's just so delicious. Killing you. <laughs> Killing you. <clears throat> my cousin called me. The FBI guy, my aunt was calling me, this, 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 this. Hey, your dad's been rushed to the hospital. This yesterday. Your dad's been rushed to the hospital. Da, 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 da. I was like, oh, God, what a, his heart, da, 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 da. I said, Lord, I receive everything heaven has for his body to line up right now in the name of Jesus. I, I, can't, I cannot get there in five hours, but, Lord, I receive supernaturally his health that's going to line up according to the word of God. And, and, and I called him, hey, hey, hey. I called him, hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? I said, man, I said, I said you doing all right? He said, yeah, man, I'm, 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 I'm doing good. He said, you remember that conversation that we had when you was up here for that week? I said, what's that? He said, when you told me either I'm going to address my health with what goes in my mouth or the doctor is going to say I'm going to address it by going in your chest with a knife. He said, you remember you told me that? I said, yeah, I remember. He said, I've got the if this... this. <laughs> He said, I forgot me of this, this heart doctor, man. I went in there, and he told me, man, you, you, you're going to kill yourself if you don't get off this salt, this sodium, this grease, this processed food. He said, I'm just here to tell you now, you don't want to keep seeing me. You don't see us often before we go in that chest. He said, yeah, man. He said, hey, bring this little plate. He, 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 he wanted to get out early. He wanted to just, he just said, no, you can't, you can't, you cannot just check yourself out of the hospital. He says, man, they bring the plate, and they got this little chart thing, man. It's a little chart thing by the plate. I, I, said, it, it, I said, what does the chart thing say? He said, right at the top of it, it says healthy eating. <laughs> healthy eating. Proteins, carbs, veggies, fruits, and all this kind of stuff. And he said, well, they won't give me no tea. <laughs> they won't give me no orange juice. I said, no, they won't give you none of that. I said, no, ain't it, ain't it, ain't it remarkable? that they are nursing you back to health with right eating. And if you don't walk by faith concerning your appetite and changing your health and start eating right, you will go right back to the wrong stuff when they have placed it right, the heart doctor has placed it right in front of you and said, if you want to live, you got to eat like this. If you walk out of that room with all the hope and joy in your heart in the world, but if you don't say, Lord, by faith, I'm a veggie man. No more fried foods. No, it's going to be hard. No more, no more processed food. There's nothing nutritious about fast food. You do know that, right? <laughs> nothing. I don't care what they say. Nothing. No, absolutely nothing. It's, it's all pleasure. But if he doesn't walk out of there by faith tomorrow, so Lord, I receive this healthy eating. I receive it. And I got a little glimmer. He said, I told my wife, I said, look, all that crazy cooking you're doing, you, you got to cook like this. I pointed to that piece and said, you got to cook like this for me. Now, you keep being crazy. But I got to eat like this. Ain't nothing like standing in front of that heart, doctor. You got to walk out by faith. Why? Faith says it's not going to be easy. Faith says, I know it's hard, but employ me and we can get through it. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so I'm going to check on him tomorrow. He'll, 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 he'll be. He was giggling and gaggling today. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I, I said earlier, uh, let me just go to Romans 10. Okay, you, you there? Romans 10, verse 17. So then faith comes. Faith comes. Me to get this ready for me in the Amplified and the message. 
So then faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Faith is going is to come by a preacher teaching, hearing. What is he teaching? The word of God and hearing. You can, you can, you can hear the man or woman teaching and faith is coming. Say, but you get, in order for it to anchor down, it can't be pots and pans. They got to see the promises for themselves. They got to believe the word of God for themselves. They got to be in that word day and night for themselves. It says, it says, it says that faith deal is sealed when it comes, when, when they hear the word of God. And the word of God says all things are possible to those who believe. Not the ones who participate? Nope. Not the ones who volunteer? Nope. Not the ones who sing in the choir? Nope. Not the ones who teach the little kids? Nope. 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 Not the one who's been born again for 30 years, been in church since they was five years old. I know people just say, I've been in church since I was a little child, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, you've produced nothing. Why? You wasn't in faith. The word of God. You have to believe the word of God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Let's, let's see it in the uh, uh, Amplified. So faith comes from hearing what is told. And what is heard <laughs> comes from the preaching of the message concerning Christ. Faith comes by hearing what is told. And what is heard comes, from, comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. Christ. Christ has already died for us. It's finished works. So your faith is going to come by hearing, and you're hearing my voice right now. You're hearing the teaching right now, but that and hearing. That and hearing. That and hearing. That and hearing. You got to know what Jesus died for. When you know what he died for, you don't put up with high blood pressure. When you know what he died for, you don't put up with stress. You don't put up with worry. You don't put up with anxiety. You don't put up with lack. Why? Because your faith is coming. And you understand you shall lack no good thing. You, you actually believe that. You actually believe that you're always on top. You're always the head. You're never the tail. You actually believe that. And if that word of God is coming, it's connecting not with your emotions, with your belief. Guy or lady want to step out and start something big. I hope your belief in God is intact and not your own strength and not your own little money. You, you, so you want to put 10 grand in a business, but you're afraid to put 2,500 in God's ground? To, 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 you, 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 you are going to choke. I really believe I can do it. I really so you don't believe the all-knowing one. The all-knowing one. The one who lives on the inside of you. You don't believe that. You need to somehow crack the ground open before you start this thing with them, with him, with his system. I'm just going to go straight to Wall Street. Go straight to Wall Street and watch your knees buckle when you lose your $10,000. You walk by faith in everything you do. Amen. Let's see it in the message. Woo, glory to God. But how can people call for help if they don't know who to trust? And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted. And how can they hear if nobody tells them? And how is anyone going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it? That's why scripture exclaims a sight to take your breath away. When you see that promise on your lap, it should take your breath away. You say, my God, God has got me covered like that. It should take your breath away. Your face should be growing. A sight to take your breath away. Grand processions of people telling all the good things of God. See, when you're walking by faith, you are sharing what God is doing in your life. You are sharing the dwarfing miracles that God has done in your life. And you're, and, 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 and you're so small compared to what he's doing in your life. Grand processions of people telling all the good things of God. But not everybody is ready for this. 
ready to see and hear and act. Isaiah asked, what well we what 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 Isaiah asked, what we all ask at one time or another, does anyone care, God? Is anyone listening and believing the word of it? The point is, before you trust, you have to listen. But unless Christ's word is preached, there's nothing to listen to. You build your life off podcasts you want to. You build your life off Facebook quotes you want to. You build your life off Facebook videos you want to. That thing's going to crumble. It's going to crumble on you real fast. I tell you what, you build your life off of reading books if you want to. Reading books is great. But I tell you what, you can't build your life off. You build your life off of the word of God, and you, and you come and you hear, and you hear, and you hear. That's why you want, you want a roar. You want a roaring lion in the doggone pulpit because what you're saying, you don't want a pussycat because what you're saying is my faith is dwindling. Preach to me. My child is left. Preach that word to me. I'm thinking about killing myself. Preach that word to me. You don't want no wimp. That's into himself up here just saying stuff. You want somebody to feed your faith for the next level in your life. And I'm here to tell you, with God, there's always another level. Oh, I just retired. Always another. Man, I'm telling you, we got so much coming. We got so much coming. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We got so much coming. You know, Listen to me. People that are 60 and over, legacy is in you. And it's time for you, it's time for you to stop being consumed about retirement and get your mind on, will there be any trace of me in the earth if, when I'm gone? Legacy leavers is what we're calling it. Legacy leavers. I want to get them focused. Look, I know you're retired. I know all that kind of stuff, but you got to get legacy minded now. You got to get legacy minded. What are you going to leave now? Man, I, I, barely, I get $4,000 in my retirement. It's a fixed income. That's your problem. Take the fixed out. Yeah. I'm on an income. I'm on an income that God provides. <laughs> and he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> Legacy leavers. You, 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 you're, you're, not, you, you, you're not alone. You got to start looking at your grandkids and, and, and you got to get a vision. Two acres, two acres, two acres, two acres, two acres, two acres, two acres. Uh, how, how can we, how, how can we, how, how can we do that? You, you, you got to get a vision. You got to walk by faith. But you got to get a legacy on your mind. Why is that so important? If you left your neighborhood right now, would there be any trace of you left that affects the neighborhood after you leave? Did you start a Bible study? Small group, anything? <laughs> you talk to women, the young women, anything in that neighborhood? A- anything? W- will, will, there be, will there be any trace that you was once there? You leave kids all the money in the world. <laughs> as soon as they marry another spouse, they're going to forget about your tail. But I tell you what, I tell you what, they got 10 acres with a pond on it and a house on it and this, this, this. Hey, your, your daddy left us this. Oh, my, well, your daddy, your parents, boy, they really, they, 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 what is that? You got to leave. As a believer, I want all of us to start believing. There's going to be a trace of me in this earth when I'm gone. I don't know if that's a playground, monkey bars, seesaws. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I, I don't know what it is. Grandma's house, grandma's uh, 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 sunroom. It's going to be something that I did by faith outside of myself, and I left a trace in the earth that Derrick Rains was once here. You got to do the same thing. How do you do it? You do it by faith. You call down from heaven what you need to get what's in your heart into this earth. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You want to make a lot of money? You want to make a lot of money? Get legacy on your mind and stop getting dollars off. Get dollars off of your mind. You keep dollars on your mind in business, you're going to stay broke. You get legacy on your mind. You, you get a man who say, I want to get five people uh, a $50,000 a year lifestyle. I want to get five of them now. Well, how, can, how in the world are you going to do that? By faith. Lord, you got to bring in the resources. You got to bring in the customers. You got to bring in the ideas. 
You got to give me the wisdom on how to do this. Why? Because it's in my heart to provide a $50,000 a year lifestyle for five families. Now, you watch that man's business take off. But if he's in business to save $1,000 a month and just spend it on himself, don't honor God, don't do this, just kind of floss this, that, and the other, he'll never go nowhere. You gotta be, it's got to be something in my notes I have in here, and I want you to write this down. Something's big. Something, something big has got to be on the inside of you to do something big outside of you. This thing has to, it has to aggravate you. You can't even sleep at night for thinking about guys coming out of prison with nowhere to go. You can't even sleep at night for, for thinking about ladies coming out of prison with nowhere to go. You can't even sleep at night thinking about single moms racing across town trying to get those babies out of daycare to pick them up and, and, and get them up. You can't even sleep at night. Why? Because it's in you to serve those families in that daycare business. When you have something on the inside of you, and when you look on the outside of you and say this right here, how am I going to do that? <gasps> know this. You're not shortchanged. What do you do? You employ your faith. Lord, I'm going to keep my job. I receive everything I need for this thing in my heart to come to pass. I, I, I receive it. And you just watch faith pull down from heaven what you need to get that thing that's in your heart. Some people have had it in there for 20, 25 years. Watch it come to pass. Why are you quitting? The Holy Spirit says, why have you quit? You're 30 years old. You're 35. You're 40. You're 45. You're 50, and you've quit. Why are you quitting? Why have you quit? Why are you just existing? Why are you living off of things to do list every day? Why? Why can't you hear the leaves rustle on your walk in the evenings? Because you're consumed with tomorrow. Why have you quit? Just rolled over. You have Jesus Christ living on the inside of you. You have, you are authorized to access heaven by faith to pull down what you need and your job has tranquilized you. Taking your faith. Well, I'm just mean because this, 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 this. You better get some faith to get your joy back. So your husband enjoy being, being around you. That's what you better do. Well, I'm just so stressful at my job. I got so much going on. I don't know, what, I don't know which way I'm going. I don't know up from down, this, that, and the other. Boy, that sounds good. But I tell you what, you better get some faith for some peace in your life. You quit. You're striving off your own strength, says the Holy Spirit, and you need to get your head in the game. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You got to put down your little R&B music for a minute, and you better get some hill song on. You better get some kind of faith going in your ears. You got to get it going, baby. You got to lift your hands to the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings, headed into that stressful job and go, you know what, Lord, in the name of Jesus, it's a new day. I don't walk in. See, some people go to work with knots in their stomach. They anticipate a bad day. They anticipate the hard-headed employee. They anticipate the hard-headed support. They, they anticipate it, and they're stressed before they even get there. Tranquilized. Instead of saying, Lord, I'm in control of this life. I do my job is unto you now. I do my job. I'm going to be a witness in this place for you. I do my job as unto you and uh, give me the wisdom, give me the personnel. And, uh, Lord, I'm just going to love people, but I am not going to take it personal anymore. This company does not rise and fall with me. Now, I know what I need. They know what I need. I'm not going to stress out over it. They know the personnel I need. I'm not going to stress out over it. Lord, I'm going to do my job as unto you. And everywhere they see me, they're going to see you. That's the extent I'm putting myself into this thing. But when you start thinking, that somehow or another, 
the thing that you're over in and running is going to collapse if you don't act a fool and be stressful and yell and backbite and BCC and CC and cut corners and all this kind of stuff and scream and all that. You are just striving off your own strength. What I say to you tonight, strive in faith. Start saying, my job is pleasant. God, I thank you for it. This is just a stepping stone because this thing is in my heart. I'm going to do my work as unto you. I'm going to be faithful of what you got in front of me, and I am going to walk by faith concerning this. And God will partner with you. And what you thought would take you three years to get out of there, it took you six months. You said, man, how in the world did I get in this system? Everybody is cooperative. They're happy. They're smiling, coming to work for the love of God. What's, what's going on here? God says, you know what? I heard you cry. I heard you cry. Now you enjoy going to work. You're not tranquilized. Jobs can tranquilize you and just, and you just sell an hour and make a dollar. Pick the kids up, back seat, grab some groceries, put food on the stove, get in the shower, do your homework, and get up and do it again. And don't even realize 2019 has went by. Fourth quarter is here. What are you walking, what are you building by faith? I know what you're doing from nine to five. What are you what can you say right now, man, at the beginning of the year? I was at 245, and I believe God for a personal trainer. I did not have the $40 a month. I didn't have it, so I just walked the first three months, and lo and behold, somebody just came up to me in the church on my job and said, hey, I want to pay for that trainer. I see your goals, da 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 And today, you're 189. They said, boy, you're really lucky. Oh, no, I ain't lucky now. I had faith that I could do this. God brought the resources. And I move my legs a lot. <laughs> hey, I, want, I only want eagles around me. I want faith-filled people around me. You want faith-filled people around you. Not nobody who's going to tranquilize you. Not nobody who's got you chasing dollars, chasing dreams. It's like, no, we're chasing legacies around here. We're trying to leave legacies around here, man. I got to leave a trace that I was even here. How are you going to do that? I don't know. Maybe your hometown needs a shelter. Maybe your hometown. I don't know what your hometown. I don't know what Jacksonville needs. But you know what God has placed in your heart that faith can bring to pass. Okay. Ten minutes here. <clears throat> Glory to God. Woo. Until, you, until you've had a taste of finishing, quitting will consume your appetite. Until you had a taste of finishing, quitting and hesitancy will consume your appetite. Dormancy will consume our appetite. We'll just sit dormant. But when you taste the finish line, when you say, my God, I never thought I could lose 15 pounds. I never thought I could get into a size 34. Well, I've tasted something here. I've tasted something. 34, 30, here I come. And people go, 30 now, let's not, let's not try to go back to your college size now. Faith goes, shut up. <laughs> if you never taste finishing, quitting, dormancy, hesitancy, excuses will consume your appetite when faith should be occupying. Faith should be the number one occupier of a man's spirit. That's why everybody want to get shortcuts. They want to take shortcuts. They want to be Duval Asphalt tomorrow. You can't be no Duval Asphalt tomorrow. What are you talking about? You can't do that. You're nowhere near that scale. You can't be Mark Zuckerberg tomorrow. Are you kidding me? You're kidding yourself. No. Faith goes. Faith says, I see what's in your heart to do. And it's not going to be any shortcuts. Now, you want me to lead you and guide you? I can do it. You want to strive off your own strength? Go ahead. Try to lead with your money you want to. You'll lose every dime of it. But well, faith says, you may not have to use that money. Just let me pioneer the way. And God is saying to you tonight, listen, the quitting is over. Stop it. You've tasted what it means to be a loving person. You've tasted what it means to forgive somebody and see the, the weight lifted. You've tasted what it means to release somebody of $100 and you see, the, you see them like, you've tasted, you've tasted and you've seen and you felt what it means to, to pay somebody's rent. And, and, and you quit sewing. You became dormant. 
You became hesitant and you quit. And quitting is not an option for a believer. Sounds like you got a game going on. Well, maybe there's a game. First Timothy verse, chapter 6, verse 11 through 14. What did Paul tell Timothy? Fight the good fight of faith. Well, I don't know about who fight the air. <laughs> fight the good fight of faith. <clears throat> mm, mm, mm. Faith builders. <clears throat> Until you had a taste of finishing, quitting and hesitancy and dormancy will consume your appetite. I remember five years ago, I was buying custom shirts, this, that, and the other. I said, I know I'm a doggone size 16 shirt. 17 shirt, people go, boy, that shirt, no, it's clean. Ooh, whoa. Boy, the Holy Spirit said to me one day, do you realize you're buying for your gains? (laughs) You're buying for your extra gains? I said, my God, I got a 17 shirt in my closet, a 16 and a half shirt, a 16 shirt, neck shirt, and a 15 and a half. For the love of God, which one is it? I tell you, I tell you which one it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be that 16. But you're expanding and you're thinking you're sharp. But you're buying shirts for your gains that you don't, you, that's gotten out of control on you. See, the laws of the earth, all of them have a natural course. You put more in than you're burning, you're going to gain. Period. <laughs> you put that word of God in you, and you keep hearing it and hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. And you never thought you could love. You never thought you could forgive. You never thought you could come out of debt. But you put it in, and all of a sudden, it just takes its natural course. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the ground. Faith is not a building. It's a garden. And you don't control that. You can't see it. (laughs) Remember my side example. Can you imagine if I kept calling Minister Jeff every two days after he's laid the sod down, saying, what is going on here? What can we do here, Jeff? I mean, my God. And and he's like, what? Man, I, I took a half a day to lay it down. It's down. It's tight. Sod grows in five ways. The roots grow down, and they grow out of the four sides, and they connect. That's what the side side grows. Once it's down and it's watered, there's nothing else you can. I can't do nothing else. I I can't. I can't rush it. But see, here's what happens. When we step out and start walking by faith, the striving by your strength will be just like me calling him. Every two days, when is this thing going to grow? Faith goes, employ patience and let her have a perfect work here now. You keep working your job, you just keep walking out by faith. I got to go to this meeting. I went to the meeting. They didn't say nothing about they wanted to help me out. Just keep going. It's the ground. Things are happening. People are moving behind the scenes on your behalf. God is sending favor ahead of you. You Don't pull the side up and go to checking it. Don't pick up the phone and call me. This is Jeff. You got to let the ground Take its natural course. You gotta let faith take its natural course. <clears throat> mm. Woo! Hallelujah. It's hard for a believer to be what they can't see inside. It's hard for a believer to be what they can't see inside. So you can read a book, The Millionaire Next Door. And you, and you can read uh, entrepreneurial magazines and all this kind of stuff. You, you can read it, but if it's not on the inside of you, forget it. It's a hustle. It's a glorified hustle. And it's not growing from month to month, year to year, doing exploits, quantum leaps. I can't control this. I got to hire some folks. It's not doing it because you're striving by your own strength. Faith will have you scared when you're growing something. Faith will make you say, you better get to a people relationship course this weekend fast. Why? You got 11 employees now. You got to learn some stuff. 
you got workman's comp now. You got insurance. You, you got some stuff going on. And, 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 and faith don't care. Once you said that, once you put it out there, faith don't care. It's going to go. It's going to go. God's system is going to go. It's going it's, it's, it's to go. It's, it's, it's going to happen. I'm here to tell you. All of the pieces will come together for that outcome to be glorious to our Lord. Oh, We'll pick up here next week. <laughs> By faith, I hear my wife. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Let me get my prayer counselors down front. Woo, man. Boy, I hope you stir it up tonight. I hope you realize you can't quit tonight. I hope you realize that you, you had quit. And the Holy Spirit said, you